class, Mr. Walker here. We're going to go over our next lesson on Amplify. We're talking about Ben Franklin still. Okay? This lesson is Unit 8B, Subunit 1, Lesson 9, From Parlor Trick to Science. Why is it called this? Well, up to this point in time, science has been the study and the understanding of the universe around us, right? How do things work? Why do they work? What are practical applications of these things? There were also, at the same time, things known as parlor tricks. And a parlor trick was basically a form of entertainment, right? Oh, look what I can do with this. Oh, watch these spinning rods. Oh, watch this big static spark come down to the sky. There wasn't any hope to gain understanding about it. The goal was to make some money and make people smile, laugh, and say, ooh, ah, that was it. So the reason that they've called this lesson from parlor trick to science is specifically working with electricity. See, electricity for us at this point is ubiquitous, meaning it's everywhere, okay? Everything we do is based generally on electricity. There are very few things that we use that don't take some electricity. And when you think about what a profound impact it's had on our life, I mean, air conditioning, the clock behind me, the computer you're watching this on, our cell phones, everything that we use, food refrigeration, relies heavily on electricity. But at the time that this was going down, there was no electricity. Lights in the city were powered by gas or oil. In your own home, you would have a lamp that you would carry around from room to room or candles that were lit in places. For heating your house, you would have a big giant metal stove that you would have to add coal or wood or sometimes heating oil to. Everything relies now upon electricity and we just kind of take it for granted. And so Ben Franklin is kind of the person who sought understanding of this in American history. He worked very, very difficult to figure out how does this go? Why does this work? And so he's credited with a number of important inventions. So let's talk about this lesson. The whole point of it is why him? He was a writer, he was a statesman, okay? He was all about the public good, but he was also a scientist. There were lots of scientists. Why him? Why is he the guy to make this thing work? Well, let's talk about it. The first thing you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna do is go to slide number two. Okay? And it's got a little bit of reading for you to do. Okay? Franklin the scientist right here. And basically what that article is talking about, thank you with me, there you are, Franklin the scientist here, is that Franklin encountered a guy by the name of Spencer, okay? who was a doctor, but he was also a showman. So Franklin is in France, or sorry, in Boston at the time, and this guy comes to town and he puts on kind of a show. And Franklin watches it, and he even advertised for him because he already knew how it went. And what this guy did is he took a long glass tube and he would have people slightly run their hand against him. And that would generate an electric charge on that person. And then they could touch another person and they would pass that charge on and it would kind of zap them, right? We've all done this before. But he did it in a much more grand fashion. There was one time that he lined up 80 soldiers in France and he did the same thing and he shot the guy in the far end of it. Because the charge will go through person to person to person to person, assuming that nobody's standing with bare feet on the ground because that's how the charge goes back to the ground. So anyway, Ben Franklin knew about this. He knew that the guy did these shows and he came to Boston and he thought, you know what, I wanna learn more about this. And so he started doing these experiments with his club, right, the Junto. And so in this Junto club, he would, he would have the guys have another long glass tube, and they would draw what they called the electrical fire from that tube, and they would try to figure out when a person was charged, how would that charge travel, who would not get shocked, and who would get shocked. And he came up with a lot of the terms that we still use, okay? It's very interesting that he managed to do this back in that time, but again, why him? Well, I'll make this argument. Ben Franklin, had a very unique set of skills. One, he was, he was wicked curious, right? He wanted to know everything. Always loved figuring stuff out. But electricity was not one of those things that required a theoretical physicist. 
a theoretical experimenter. What I mean by that is he didn't, it didn't need somebody who was going to sit in a chair and read a book and just write and say, I think this, this could do this. It needed somebody who was a bit of, a, a bit of an oddball with his experimentation side. He was going to build things and make contraptions. And those contraptions would result in new things being learned. Not all scientists are wired that way. Okay, one of the greatest scientists of our time in very recent history is Stephen Hawking. See, Stephen Hawking couldn't get out of his chair because of his illness that he had, but he was brilliant. He was a theoretical physicist. He could think up things and have ideas as to how it would work, but he couldn't go out and demonstrate them in the world because he physically couldn't do it. He could tell other people to do it. Ben Franklin was all of that. He loved to tinker with things. He loved to build inventions and contraptions. So what you're gonna to wanna to do here is read this, and then there's a little paragraph here. Basically what they're asking you to do on this paragraph is unpack it, figure out what it means, this one paragraph. And it's going to help you, once you've translated this and made sense out of it, to do the next part. Because the next part up here is, still looking good. The next part over here is on slide four, Franklin the scientist. And Franklin the scientist specifically describes his experiments with static electricity with his Junto club. And this one here, it actually shows us what he does and it answers some of the question, why him? Why is he so ideally suited for that? And here it describes the terms that he's coined that we still use, such as uh, electrized. Um, he also says battery, charge, neutral, condensed, conductor. These are all words that he, he made the expression up when dealing with electricity. And he figured, well, people will come along after me and they'll rename these things. But here we are, a couple hundred years later, still using those same words. Because again, he was an innovator. He was the first to do a lot of these things. So your assignment on this is, of course, a writing assignment. I would like you to write 120 words on slide five. Slide five asks the question, why was Ben Franklin the ideal person to change the study of electricity from parlor trick to science? That's it. And it shouldn't be very tough, again, especially if you've done the other two exercises, because you're gonna understand what qualities he had, his ingenuity, his willingness to experiment. All of those things made him very, very uniquely qualified to do this. So that's it. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you for the next lesson.